Oh, I already turned it on by accident. But um, I'm gonna make this quick. I know I haven't put out a video in a while. I've just been getting acclimated to the job and working with the horses in the barn and so on. Um, so this came up in conversation recently. A dude started quoting the Bible. I won't get into why, because um, I'm trying to make this short. Because I'm running out of room on my phone. I have to go through and um, clean it out, basically. Oh my gosh. I to... So this came up in conversation. Dude was quoting the Bible. He was, uh, I kind of said something to him. He was talking about like gold, gold diggers. And I just said, like, uh, you know, it's been my observation. Women typically bring more to the relationship in the whole situation than men typically like to admit uh, and quite often he owes her that money for one reason or another not always but the trend seems to typically be that anyway so then he goes uh, you know I went into it launched a, t a tad bit touched upon something I mentioned in a previous video about females being the beasts of burden to their species and so on and so forth and he's like yeah yeah I've heard that um, but, you know, the Bible says that Eve was made for Adam and that God took the rib from Adam to make Eve. Like, he's young. He's on the young side. Um, he's a teen. So, he's a good kid, but, like, I was like, um, actually, I didn't even th have to think about it. I just reacted immediately. I was like, actually, it's the opposite of that. And he's like, huh? And I was like, <laughs> okay, so I was like, so, let's teach you something. Ready? I was like, I'm just going to throw this out there and you can consider it. Um, and that goes for the rest of you. So, and I'm video recording this horizontally. So I apologize if I'm looking in a weird location. The camera's like in a different spot now. Um, so I just grabbed a piece of paper and showed him like, so I was like, so how much do you know about chromosomes? And he was like, oh, I learned a little bit about that in school and science class. I, I didn't think it was really interesting. I didn't pay too much attention. And I was like, well, you should totally pay more attention to chromosomes because they're very interesting. And I was like, and I learned something about, um, I realized something based on stuff I learned in typo about typography. So like, I was like, how much do you know about typography? And he goes, he goes, I don't know what the science is. And I was like, it's not a science, dude. I learned it in art school. It's, you know, what, it's, um, it's, sorry, it's just getting like a message. Um, it's what, like, something that graphic designers learn. You know, I start pointing out, you know, see that font, see that lettering on the side of the bag there, and see the lettering on your t-shirt, like, those are different fonts, they look different. Typographers are the ones who design those fonts. They work with letters, and they work with alphabets, and <clears throat> it's pretty old practice. Designing, designing letters and alphabets. Um, so, so I was like, so, okay, so real quick, let's just go into this real quick. So I said, so you probably learned these basics, right? In science class, um, you know, females have an XX chromosome. Males have an XY chromosome. See, see that? Um, so in typography, again, the design of letters, um, I'll show you this. I think I went, I, so I wrote this out first for him. And then I went like, so let's use a K as an example. Sorry, my pen's not working particularly well today. Come on, you. Give me a K. So I was like, so in typography, they have their own lingo. Pay attention, because it's pretty interesting. In typography, they have their own lingo. So they break down parts of a letter and they call them different, like, they call them based, based on different parts of human anatomy. So, for example, this part of the K might be called the arm. This part of the K might be called the leg. This might be called the backbone of the spine. Um, you know, the, the, the bumps on a M might be called, like, the shoulders or something. Um, however, they have a catch-all term for all of the parts of a letter. Kind of like the way you might say, instead of saying, like, get the Labrador and the Poodle and the Shih Tzu, you would say, get the dogs. 
right? So a typographer telling like his apprentice or whatever, instead of saying, you know, you need to fix the arm and fix the legs and again, like fix the spine, he would be like, you need to fix all the ribs on this, you know, like after he'd already gone into the details. He'd be like, so remember, fix all the ribs on this. That's, that's the term they use. Ribs. They call all the parts the letter ribs. So, for those of you who don't see where this is going, you ready? Let's make a big old X right here. I'm sorry, again, like this this pen is just dying. I have one another one right here. Give me a second. Por favor. Por favor. One of my coworkers uh, um, speaks Spanish is his first language, so he and I are going back and forth practicing Spanish and English with each other. Brushing up on my Spanish again. Okay, so there's the K, just in case you couldn't make it out before. There's the X, 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 X. There we go. That's female. X, Y, that's male. All right. And again, these are called ribs. Ribs. These parts of a letter. Spine. Arm, leg, but they're all called ribs. Okay. I hope this isn't backwards, coming in backwards. There we go. So now let's take an X. X, X. Remember, the X is the female chromosome. It's more the female chromosome because we're XX. Y, you could say, is more assigned to males because only males have Y chromosome. Females don't. What happens when you remove a rib from the X? What do you get? And to me, it looks weird because it looks backwards because it's flipped. So, just in case, I'm going to also do this. What happens when you remove a rib from the X? See, it looks better. It looks. From what I'm, where I'm looking, like it looks proper, but I think it's probably you guys can see it properly when I place it back, right? You get a Y. He's like, oh, you get a Y. I was like, yeah, you get a Y. So it's a rib was taken from Eve to make Adam. A rib was taken from you take a rib from the X to get a Y. Take a rib from the female to get a male. And again, we see this in the way fetuses develop. We all start off roughly as female, and then about half the time, um, a fetus, you know, that's been that has like the Y chromosome, it will build up enough androgen, testosterone, male hormone, to push back against its mother's estrogen, and then the ovaries descend into testes, and the clitoris elongates, and we have a male. But you start off basically with a female. So you start off basically with an X. And then you have to remove something to get a Y. You have to remove, you start off with a female and you have to remove something to get a male. This harkens back to how females are more of, um, are more of a representation of balance and equilibrium. Because we have both in us, we have the light and the dark, whatever. And males are more a representation of chaos and inertia, like just you know, movement and going, and like a dick thrusting in air, like what Louis C.K. put it, I think, at one point. Just, we're just a dick thrusting, looking for Pater. Basically, that all over, just looking wherever they can to score. So, um,. Like, so males are kind of like an exaggerated aspect of females, and females have, females have both. Females are more the yin and the yang. They're the black and the white. The males are more like just the white. They're just one exaggerated aspect of females. And that's how they make, that's how males are, are representative of chaos and inertia, and females are representative of balance and equilibrium. And it's these two, it's these two, it's the inter interaction between, between these two elements, these two things that creates life. So, and it's also seen here in the 
chromosomes and literally how it's, it plays out in typography, the design of letters and alphabets and ribs. And, and I'm pretty sure that designing letters and alphabets was around a lot longer than the King James Bible. very possible that the same lingo has been around that long too, I'm not sure. So it's very possible that they were referring to the different parts of letters, in like typographers and letter designers and such, or scribes, I, like maybe thousands of years ago, that's what they would have been called. It's possible they were already referring to the different parts of letters as ribs or whatever word they used for ribs back then, in the, that, those parts of the world. That they were already breaking down, talking about the parts of letters in terms of human anatomy and already referring to the different parts with a catch-all phrase, a catch-all term of ribs. It's very possible. Well before the Bible ever came out. So he was like, oh, so like, the Bible isn't, like, it's kind of misleading. And I was like... I mean, I'm not trying to say the scripture is totally, I'm like, I think the, mis the scripture is being like misinterpreted and sometimes mistranslated. And so I suggested like, you should totally go back to the source, like try to read the most original bit you can find. Most people don't even know that the Bible was originally written in ancient Greek. They think it was like written in Latin or something. No, I started translating it like the Revelation of John. Uh, yeah, John, Revelation John uh, from Greek, but again, there's only so much time in the day. Um, and so, one thing that you realize is, for, for one thing, some words have like five different translations that you could put in there, plug in there. You know, and which changes like the whole meaning of the phrase and the passage. So it's kind of, could be based on someone's bias, the translator's bias. So I was just like, you should really go as far back to the source as possible, and I wouldn't just rely on like the version that was put out there by a king who's been dead for several hundred years, you know, like, <laughs> who, um, who, from what I hear, you know, used to tell people, like, you'll believe this and you'll go, you'll abide by this book or, you know, you'll be beheaded. So that doesn't sound like a dude who really, um, understands free will and, like, respects it, so. And I think like the highest up is all about the free will. Otherwise there wouldn't have been able to be a breaking away to begin with, like a secession to begin with. There wouldn't have been a fall it, unless it was like already allowable. If you think about it, which suggests that it would be like, you know, whatever the first deity, whatever the highest power is, first power, that would be responsible for free will. It would respect that. Or else it like, just wouldn't have been possible. Well, at least that's what I think. Anyway, you should definitely consider this. Um, it totally suggests that it's the opposite. It's not that a rib was taken from Adam to make Eve. It's that a rib was taken to eat from Eve and to make Adam. And he doesn't have everything we have. He doesn't have any, everything that Eve has. Like, he can't. Because... They had to take something from her to, like, make him. So he can't have everything she has. Or she has. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So. I'm gonna end it there. I have to go uh, feed the horses soon. Well, we have to go, like, continue cleaning out stalls and stuff. And then feed them. So. Good night.